hello everyone. Instead of suffering through another TCW related review, I'm going to be taking a br another break from that and reviewing another six issues of the classic Star Wars run. A innocent time where the Star Wars Expanded Universe wasn't like it is today and some of the stories could feel a little strange for those who have read the Dark Horse comics or the modern Marvel comics. But the issues that I'm going to be reviewing today will be a two-issue story arc and essentially one issue you know stories which are self-contained well one of them you is not really self-contained I me mean, too considering the fact you'd have to read another issue in order to actually fully appreciate the story now the first one is it takes place right after the the previous story arc I'm going by chronologically where Luke Han and Leia just escaped the empire when they were tr when they were trapped in a space yacht which is a which was a casino and like in a six issue arc now unlike the last review I'm not going to record these as separate videos and and edit them together. I'm doing this all at once. Now, the first one, which I'm going to pretty much call it the Siege of Yavin arc, which is two issues, where the rebels are being you know, harassed by Imperials on a base on the moon of Yavin, not you know a planet, you know what I mean. Which kind of makes you question... I know the re the real world reason why they haven't moved their base yet, but why would you not move your base? The Empire knows where you are. Why would you fucking still have your base on Yavin? It makes no sense. I'm pretty sure there's some retcon out there that explains why, and I know the real world reason why, but it just, it's a little, it's silly to me that the Rebellion at this point still hasn't you know, move their base. Now, as for the actual story, I think it's a pr it's a, it's a pretty good one. I'm I mean I, I I it's the art's really good. I mean we don't learn anything new about the characters, but then again, back then they couldn't really do anything. You know, with with, with the with the characters, considering the fact that, well, let's face it. They were limited what they can write about. All they had was the original movie to go off of. Which, honestly, I'm impressed that for like close to 40 issues, they managed to actually tell some pretty good stories despite having barely anything to work with. Just goes to show you just how creative, you know, these people were. And how they worked around their limitations, unlike, well, the new canon, which kind of puts, you know, limits itself on its own. Now, again, I'm a sucker for 70s artwork, and I love the penciling in, the, in, in this issue. Don't worry, I will be talking about the follow-up issue. I think and I love and I really love this, you know, panel here. Gorgeous. I know some of the art may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm s I just I love it. I think these two issues were pretty good. Even though they're not the greatest story wise, I think art wise alone is what makes me you know, enjoy these issues. Now, the follow-up issue, which is a standalone story, which focuses on, you know, a certain character from who appeared in issue 16. He's pretty much the lead character of this issue. 
Now, I think he's pretty cool as, as a character, despite not appearing that much. He's essentially a cyborg bounty hunter who is who has an intense hatred for droids, which is revealed in this issue. And again, another issue with, a, with great art. Now, this may not be your cup of tea, but for me, I absolutely adore this art style in this in this comic. I mean, the whole reason why I've been enjoying this more than than what than most people is just it, it, the, the, this story and along with others are something I haven't really read before. I think a story on its own, I think it's pretty good. One of the better ones out there. I don't want to spoil it, but it kind of you kinda, you learn more about about villain virulence. I think that's his name. Sorry if I pronounce that wrong, I'm sorry. But I think he's a pretty cool character, despite having very little appearances. And doesn't go out like a bitch like Boba Fett. Oh, I just spoiled, you know, one of the issues. Sorry, we got a little ahead of ourselves. Issue 28 focuses on Han and Solo and Chewbacca, and it, and it deals with the aftermath of the previous story arc before, you know, the Siege of Yavin. Now, how's this story? I think it's the weakest of these. I mean, I don't find it as intriguing or as interesting. Yes, the art is still good, but for God's sake, Chewie still looks like fucking Bigfoot. I mean, have these people not seen A New Hope? It, the art's pretty good. I mean, this shot, this this panel with the Millennium Falcon and the Star Destroyer, just looks gorgeous. <laughs> I know I'm praising the art more than I'm praising the stories, but it's just I love the the art probably more than the stories. And of course, this story is the weakest. I mean, we're introduced to Jabba the Hutt, kind of. I mean, some people may consider this a contradiction, which it is. But there is, I, I believe there's an explanation behind it, but I don't know at the moment. Because, you know, Java, I will forgive this contradiction, because Java the Hutt, his appearance was not established in 1979, I believe, when this comic was released. So I'm willing to let this slide. I mean, there was no official look for the character. So, yeah, I will let this one slide. Now, probably my favorite of these stories is Dark Encounter, which, now don't spoil this for me, Valence, this is a Valence and Darth Vader story, which, I this is another issue I like. I love the atmosphere, and I, lo and I love the art for it, and again, I thought the way he went out was freaking awesome. He... And I just love, you know, it's this is a awesome freaking, you know, in my opinion, a, an awesome fight between a non-force user and a cyborg. And he doesn't go out like a like a chump like Boba Fett does. And okay, I know Boba Fett survives the expanded universe, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of Boba Fett. I really am not. I mean. He's a, he was a short-lived character, as far as I know. I could be wrong, but I'll retract my statement if when I read more stories. This one, I think, is probably my favorite of, of the ones that I'm reviewing. Now, A Princess Alone. This is a, a, Prince, a Leia story, probably the, the first one in this run of Star Wars. This is the 30th issue. And again, I, this is a, another standalone issue. I think this could be read as its own individual story. I think you don't need to read every, you know, all the stuff that came before it. And what do I think of it? This one's my least favorite, honestly. I mean, I do appreciate that Leia looks different in this comic instead of. Oh, oh my god, it's like, how many issues have has she been in her New Hope attire? It is refreshing to see her in a different outfit for once. Okay, I understand the real world reasons behind it, 
but it's refreshing that you know she's in something new and different. You know, it it is a good story. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to spoil um, what the story is about. You know, Leia is trying to in, to sh install hope in, in into the people in this prison and showing that the rebellion does indeed exist. Indeed, the art is great. Honestly, in my opinion, this since I'm done with reviewing these comics, I've had to be honest. At the very beginning of of Marvel Star Wars, at least the classic, I was mixed about you know th this run because the stories I just didn't click well with me. And this is when I think that, in my opinion, that the stories are getting better and better. It's feeling more like the Star Wars that I love. And honestly, this is one of those times where patience, you know, it my patience has paid off completely. I think the writing is, is better, the art is getting better, and I'm looking forward to reviewing more. Next time I tackle the classic Marvel run, I will be reviewing the first ever annual for Star Wars. But, unfortunately, I gotta torture myself with more TCW-related content. Fucking kill me now.